Right, I'm the artist taxi driver. This, my friends, is Paula Peters from um, uh, DPAC, <laughs> Disabled People Against the Cuts. And um, I've spoken to you before, and we've come here. To, you've come here today to talk about Atos has quit. Atos has given up, but now we've got Maximus, an American company, who have uh, taken over the work capability assessment for the government. First of all, can, can we just uh, explain what the work capability assessment is? Well, the work capability assessment is to test your functionality and your capability to work. So they're putting all disabled people through this most horrendous, stressful assessment. So picking up a pound coin, picking up an empty cardboard box, picking up a one pint milk bottle. If you can pick up, if you can push a button with one finger, you're fit to work. It's absolutely ludicrous so when you go in they're, they're, they're making people yeah they make people bend down and do things that you know they're in pain and what have you they can't do and they you know and if they can't do things they will lie on assessments to say so i mean a friend of mine who had a tribunal got a decision overturned was told there was a couch in the room on the report when there wasn't and she did x y and z she bent down did this and she couldn't she couldn't bend over she was in too much pain in her back she couldn't even walk five metres and she got her decision overturned and put in a support group. She was found fit for work by Atos. We've had people terminally ill found fit for work. I mean, absolutely ludicrous. So who are these people that are running these, these assessments? Well, you get physiotherapists, you get occupational therapists, you get registered nurses who are not qualified. They can't, you know, and there aren't that many doctors because they're too expensive. And it is targeted to remove people of benefits. And that's what I've got to say to all of you out there. This is ideological policy to remove people of benefits. It's to save money. It's actually cost the government more money with appeals because 72% of claimants have had their decisions overturned with representation who are found fit for work by ATOS, who were not fit for work at all. And when you're in the work-related activity group, you know, you're supposed to, they're saying you're supposed to work sometime in the future. Well, 64% of claimants in the RAG group of ESA have been sanctioned, have mental health conditions. And over 500,000 people who are on the work programme have been sanctioned. And that's just outright, that is just shit. Crap. I mean, it's an obscenity, isn't it? Yeah. This, this whole, uh, I mean, it's very shaming. Yeah. It, it's... it's degrading, it's demoralising, it's discriminating, it's stressful. And then, and, and then have... ultimately their, their, their benefits are withdrawn. Yeah, they're completely stopped. So people have got no money to live on. And then if you're put in the mandatory reconsideration stage, which was introduced in October 2013, you can be in the mandatory reconsideration stage for months up to a year with no money. You can't claim JSA because the job centre said you're not well enough to work, but you won't get any money until they say, well, we're withholding, we're upholding a decision. And then, so you're left months and you've got to rely on friends and family or to, to live, or you have to get um, a hardship grant from your local council if they've got that and then you've got to pay that money back so it's about reducing welfare costs in yeah. in, in in the name of austerity yeah. no matter what the damage yeah yeah it's they cut disabled people have bled for this they're dying over this that's what that is what's so shameful so, what, i can't even understand what's wrong with, with because it you know what's wrong with with your your, your gp your doctor just saying, why do you have to go through this shamey thing? Yeah, well, this is the government who, like I say, it's ideological policy. They want to remove people off benefits and they're degrading claimants in the media with a huge propaganda thing calling us scroungers, fraudsters. It's not us who are scroungers. It's the MPs who are scroungers by claiming huge expenses and tax avoidance. And, you know, we've seen with HSBC lately and... And all the rest of it. So and we've got 4.8 million tests so far. Yeah. And only 28,000 people have found a job. Yeah. 26,000 I mean, you, you have to wonder how many people have been sanctioned because 
you know, I mean, as well as being shaming and, and you know, there's no structures within our society for for people who haven't got contact within social media and that. Yeah. They've just been abandoned. We, yeah. do, we, do we even know how many people have been abandoned? And, um, and that, you know, there are so many people who haven't come forward and share their stories because they're too frightened to, and they have. I mean, the services, I mean, in Bromley, they've just announced the cuts to... Um, the winter shelter accommodation here in Bromley, that's going. And we're just about to lose CareLink in Bromley as well. And they're making huge cuts across the board, across every council in the country. And we're losing services, support services, backroom service, you know, care packages. Countless and, suicides. Yeah. Uh, 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 the DWP itself, Ian Duncan Smith, has admitted that they're investigating 60 yeah. suicides yeah. attributed to... Yeah. Is it attributed to the work capability assessment? It's the stress and the fear that has led to a great many deaths, not just 60 deaths they're investigating, they're investigating 60 deaths, but there are over, they're saying 1,300 people have died around the assessments. We know it's more than that. That the stress and the fear and the constant hounding of being reassessed has led to many people taking their own lives. Their health has deteriorated and nine out of ten welfare rights advisors across the UK have, have said that the constant hounding of being reassessed, sometimes as many as four times a year, every three months, wow. has led to so many people. Four times a year, yeah, every three, three months, months, you go for a test. You can be reassessed. No matter what your disability, no yeah. matter... You can be reassessed three months, So now we've got this months. Maximus, because oh, you're going all... Yeah. We've got protests on Monday, yeah. but Maximus is... Um, uh, working for Ian Duncan Smith, the Department of Work and Pensions for the government, yeah. and it's so, so they're making disabled people what do tricks for for entertainment for for what what what. what? Mac, we don't call them Maximus, we call them Maximas now. So that's that's the new name we've got for them, and they're being paid half a billion pound for this contract. So they're getting two hundred million more than Atos to carry out the. Uh, work capability assessments and I want to say to everybody out there that if you're working Maximus have the occupational health contract you're off work for four weeks your doctor signs you off four weeks you're going to face a Maximus telephone consultation so they send you back to work and you're not well and then you have a mental health problem you can't cope with the stress anymore you have a massive breakdown you're put through then you, you signed off you claim ESA you're put through then the work capability assessment and Maximus. They find you fit for work. You claim JSA. They say, right, you've got to go in the work programme. You're going to face Maximus because they're in the work programme. So, 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 so this, this, this Maximus, what's their reputation like before? They're a US insurance company. Um, they, had, they settled a out-of-court in, um, Medicaid insurance uh, court case with the federal government for $30.3 million. Um, expenses fraud. Um, they settled a disability discrimination case for fifty thousand dollars because they denied one of their employees a woman promotion because she had a stroke. They're a nasty, nasty outfit. They're also known as international healthcare, so they're involved in the privatisation of the NHS. I mean, this is actually uh, talking about private. This, this is the privatisation yeah. of our welfare system, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. How much are they getting? They're getting, Maximus, half a billion pounds to carry out this contract. They knew, before they awarded the contract, how discriminatory this process was, how harmful this process was, that people were dying over this, people were going hungry and homeless, and yet they still took this contract on. And we give a clear message to Maximus today. We're going to make your name so toxic, we're going to drive you out of this contract, and we say this to the government, no privatisation of our welfare state. Enough is enough. Either bring the contract, either bring the assessments back in house, or we want our own doctors. But they shouldn't assessors. even have assessments, should they? No. Shouldn't it be just down to your GP yeah. or like we want, we want our doctors, our consultants, and everything to assess us? But the BMA won't agree to that because they want more money, and they said no, they won't do that. And we're lobbying them hard to to try and do that. And obviously, you know, they it has to be stated that. Maximus, Atos, they ignore all the medical evidence that is provided with the ESA 50 questionnaires. It's ignored, completely ignored. You can have 
a file worth of medical evidence attached to your questionnaire. They ignore it. And then you've got many doctors, GPs. Claimants will go to a GP and say, I need a letter. And GPs are charging up to £200 for a letter to say, this person can't work. They're too, they're too unwell. And they're making money. And when they fill out an ESA 113 form, a GP gets £30 per patient to fill one of those out by the DWB. So on Monday, we've got the Maximus Day of Action, yep. which um, uh, is going to be happening across the country. Yep, yep. We've so got you're, you're turning, up, uh, you're having circuses. Yeah. You're going to be doing tricks and yep. all the things. We have... We've got the DPAC synchronized box lifting display we team. We have, yep. First, you know, Paris, Rome, they've been all over and uh, coming live to uh, London on Monday. And the event's called Same Circus, Different Clowns, Same Circus, it's the same work capability assessments, Different Clowns, Maximus. We have actions um, in Norwich, Ipswich, Truro, Glasgow, um, Edinburgh, Manchester, Cardiff. What other, what other um, uh, circus tricks are you going to be doing? Um, we've got Eddie, the um, Fire Eater Grant. We have Alice Rose, the Hoop Artist. We've got the Milk Bottle Relay Race. And um, we're going to have the Disability Hokey Cokey, Face Painting. And um, you'll yeah, be down probably. Parliament Square anywhere around that way. Um, we may do during the day, but uh, do, Deepak won't be Deepak without some surprises. What happens with um, uh, because also one of the biggest um, uh, disability rights activists was Sue Marsh, and they, they've uh, Maximus it kind of like how they used to do with the unions, uh, giving people you know, the corporation mm. would take union people into the they've uh, Sue's gone to work for, for Maximus. I've interviewed Sue, what, what's your thoughts on that? Um, to be honest with you, her choice, we're not impressed with that, but it's caused a lot of division across the disability movement. She's working for a private contractor, she'd be gagged by them. She's working for the DWP and when you work for a private government contractor, you can't talk about what's going on and you can't change anything. You, It's a, it's a contract. You're in, that, they're employed by the DWP. They've given strict guidelines with the contract to work on. She won't be able to change anything. So we, we, I mean, we might not even we might have a change of government soon. We might get the Labour Party. Well. <laughs> what do you think then? Do you think that, that that will make a difference? The work capability assessment will carry on for five years as is. We know that. We're hoping. I mean, what we want, we want this process scrapped. We want Maximus out, and we say to all political parties. We will make sure Maximus are put out and we will make sure that the work capability assessment is scrapped. So we say to all political parties, you need to start listening to us and listen to how people are affected on the ground. And we say to every single one of you out there, if you're, if you're having a Maximus face-to-face -face assessment, if you've been involved in the work programme and face Maximus, if you have been through an occupational um, health assessment of Maximus, we need your stories. Your voice matters. You have a story, share it with your local councillors, with your MPs across the country and to the 12 Point three million disabled people out there vote vote them out M marginal seats estimate vial is in a marginal seat in Wirral West vote her out help Wirral TUC with their sack Esther McVeigh campaign and vote her out put her out in the street and get out there in your thousands and start helping us we need your support if you can't come to a protest on Monday Share the funder clap that's on the DPAC website. Share the Twitter list. You've got, you know, just share the circus pictures. However you can help us on Monday, do it. And, and I'd give everyone out there this message. Monday is only the first action we're going to put on because we're going to seriously ramp up the pressure this side of the election and beyond.